Right, today I'm going to go over a very, very common fault on, uh, on no backlight issues on unibody MacBook Pros and also the Air machines, and that is the feedback trace being disconnected. So one of the things that, and again, you should not apply this solution to your problem if your problem is a different one, but one of the things that happens very often is that the feedback trace is missing going back to the backlight boost IC. So in this case, this is a 2013 model MacBook Air. So let's take a look at how this thing works. So you have 12 volts coming, or 8 volts in the case of this machine coming in through here, and that is going to get combined with the boost of the boost uh, backlight boost circuit. So that's this over here. Now, this is going to go through a diode, and after the diode is PPHV, SOS, WLCD backlight, or PPV out, SW backlight, whatever it is. It's different from board to board. But the point is, right over here, you're going to see something that seems like backlight output. That's going to go straight to your LVDS connector, or in this case, your display port connector, which connects to your screen and puts out a happy 31 or something volts of backlight. Now, over here is something called a feedback tray. So what this does is it, it pretty much tells the LP8550 how, what it's doing. So what the LP8550 is doing this here, but that's going to be combining with this other voltage here and you know, on the other side of the diode. Now, it actually wants to know like, what it's doing. If it doesn't know what it's doing, it's going to stop working and not do shit. So right here you have a trace where there's going to be a lot of power going through it because this, this is pretty much the highest voltage you have in the entire machine. As you can see over here, it can, it can go upwards of 50 volts. So right over here it says voltage 50. It's not really going to go that high, but it has the potential to. And if you get liquid, if you get liquid on this machine while the backlight is all the way up in the right spot, it will just, it will, it will skull fucking ruin everything. So let me show you uh, one of the first hints here that my feedback trace was going to be destroyed. So as you can see now under the microscope, this area is very fucked up looking. I also scraped away to try to get to the feedback trace, but as you can see over here, there's no probe point. Now that is the boost diode over there. So that was the D7701. So that is the boost diode on the bottom. Now on the board view over here, you're not going to be able to see any of this crap, so you just have to trust me. Uh, the, that little trace that is missing, which is right here, is, okay, let's zoom. This software sucks so bad, I swear, oh my god, it sucks. This is such useless software, except for the fact that it allows me to do my job. Okay, so this little crap over here is PPVLUT SW LCD Becklet feedback. So this here is the feedback trace. So now, when I see that, I have an idea that th this circuit, is, it, it, my feedback is missing. Now, one of the cool things you can do with this software, one of the very, very few redeeming qualities of this piece of junk, is that it allows me to, oh, my Bluetooth mouse died. Burr. Sorry about that. So, yeah, that f now one of the cool things about this software is that I can actually find every single point on the motherboard uh, that, uh, that has feedback. And uh, this is a, something that is pretty cool. PPVOUT, SW, LCDBKOT, feedback. Now, after doing this, I was very, very sad to find out that the only points on the board where that exists are on that pad that doesn't exist and underneath the fucking backlight chip. Because on this board, on the newer one, on the, the ones that are not retinas, on the one, but on the, the newer airs and on the uh, and on the old newer unibodies, that is under the chip. That is that is that is right right there. That sucks. I'm gonna post some pictures of what it is I did, and I'm also gonna show you here in the microscope what I did to get that done. Let me just wheel my chair over without going over this wire.
All right, so th this over here is the backlight output. So I, found, I was clicking around to try to find a probe point, so I wouldn't have to run a wire to the other side of the board. Those two are backlight output. So I ran the wire around here all the way underneath the chip, and this is, this is what you got. And I s See that? Now one of the short, now in my case it was obvious because as I said, well you can see what my feedback looked like over here. I mean it looked like it was destroyed. But it's not always going to be that easy. Yeah, again, like you could see that that that, that pe uh, probe point is totally missing. It got burned to hell and back. One of the things you can do to give yourself an idea is use your multimeter. Now you can now the thing is when that feedback point is in the uh, trace exists and there is feedback between it. So when that feedback trace exists in the circuit and when the output of backlight is attached to this chip. Uh, there's going to be a different reading when you measure the output of the chip to ground in resistance mode or in diode mode. So what I'm looking for here is usually 0 0.526, 0 0.531. I got 0.533. Again, it's, it's always going to be a little bit different. It's always going to be a little bit different, even on boards that are the same, because these chips all have different tolerances. They've all been abused differently, et cetera, et cetera. You know, your multimeter may feel different that day. So over here, I get 0.533. I'm expecting 0 0.526 to 0 0.531. I'm happy with that. Before, I was getting something very, very low. Now, again, this chip over here, this chip over here, it goes to ground. And as I've said in the uh, previous video, everything has to go to ground in an electrical circuit in order for it to actually work. Like somewhere in that circuit there has to be a connection to ground in order to complete the circuit. There has to be a connection to ground or there has to be a connection to something below ground, uh, you know, like minus 15, minus 120, whatever it is, so that you can actually have a circuit that works. There has to be some place for the electricity to go for it to want to go. Now, you know, if I'm connecting feedback to here, somewhere I'm going to get uh, some kind of connection to ground, or I'm going to get a decreased connection to ground. Wh whatever it is, that value between the output of the circuit, which is here, and ground is going to change based on whether I have other connections going to this, uh, to this boost IC. So if you measure here on a board that works, and then you measure on a board that, that the board that you're working on, and you get a massively different reading, you have an idea, this is, uh, you know, this is some, a place where I should start, or now I know that I have a problem with this circuit. And if you think you have a problem with the feedback trays, before you go nuts and lift the chip and put a wire into there, you can just measure. Because again, if you measure, and you measure on a good board and you get 0.532, and on your board you get 0.533, there's no point in driving yourself nuts. The problem is elsewhere. Maybe you have a blown fuse. Maybe you have a bad screen cable. You know, often blown fuse. Uh, but, but if you get a reading that's like 0.582, but like 0.6 you know, or 0.484, then you know that you need to, you know, check this out. Now, the way I did that was, the first thing is I used a broken screen cable. So the two wires that I like to use when doing these types of work, the first thing that I use is mold, that mold aluminum crap that you use on IF to get rid of Samsung uh, glass on the phone. I use that a lot because it's very sturdy, it's very thick. But here, that would have been too much. So the problem here is that this is a ball grid array chip. And if I put that wire into there with that thickness, it would have actually lifted the chip up. So the ch yeah, might as well stare it. So the, the problem I would have had there is it would have been lifting the chip up. And if I have the lifting the chip up, so the problem if I had used that mold denim wire is it would have actually been lifting the chip. Because when I would have put the chip there and soldered it, if that wire came out, it would have made the entire chip do this and none of the balls would have made contact with the board. So what I use is this. This is a screen cable for an A1150 MacBook Pro from 2006. I have a ton of these. These computers are completely, completely worthless, garbage, jack shit. Just, they are fucking worthless. I don't even care if those things are refurbishable. I don't even care if they work. They make Android phones now probably that kill that thing in computational power. I have no need for them. So I literally I just went in there I grabbed it. I ripped this fucking screen cable out. I don't care if it's good. I need it to make money. The amount of money I'm going to make fixing this computer is probably five times more than that fucking machine has, uh, has been worth in the last five years. So I ripped this out, and then I start to strip the wire. Now, 
there's about 20, 30, what I, th I don't even remember at this point, I think 20 or 30 wires inside of that one screen cable. So you cut it up like so, and then you strip it back. So I'm using Xlite 175M. I'm not using wire strippers that are made for this. I don't even think they make wire strippers that are made for wires that are this thin. So I just do it by hand and by eyesight with my Exolite 175M. This is about a $10, $11 tool. It's very worth having. You can, stri you can get rid of stripped screws with it, and you can also strip wires with it. And then I, I, after I've taken this apart and I've split so that I have one single cable, then I take one strand of that cable. So I take that one little strand of this fucking wire, which I don't even think this camera, as good as it is, you're going to be able to see. Like, look at that, look at that. It's not focusing on that. It's focusing on me. Let's see if I get out of the way. Yeah, you're never going to see this shit. Anyway, so yeah, I take that, and then I solder it in. Now, what I do is I, f I lift the old backlight I see, and I tin all the pads properly, and then I solder this wire there. Now, one of the ways that I keep this wire on the board, I have a solder that has no clean flux inside of it. So I use Kester leaded solder, but I also buy the solder when you go to all-spec.com, that's all-spec.com to buy solder to do this type of work with. You can actually choose the type of flux inside that you want. You want to choose a Kester leaded solder with no clean flux. Now, as I said, flux is what allows the solder to flow. But one of the th cool things about no clean flux, if you use a lot of it, it creates this kind of... Um, I don't know how to say it. It's like a jellyish thing on the motherboard. Mm. So you get this jellyish kind of thing on the board, and it's actually going to allow this to stick and stay there. Because as you may imagine, you're not moving this wire with tweezers. Like there, I c I've never found a set of tweezers that actually allow you to physically grab this. It's just not happening. If you try to grab it with your hand, you're just going to rage. So what I do is I simply I, I put a bunch of that solder on the board. I, you know, I flick it away. And then there's a lot of that no clean flux left over, which is kind of like jellyish stuff. So I push this wire onto the board. And then I slowly move it in there. And then I solder it not to the middle of the BGA pad. I solder it straight uh, right off to the side. Because again, I don't, want this to, I don't want this wire moving around and fucking up the ball and moving the ball around. So one of the things you may have noticed is that this wire is all the way to the right of the ball. But I make sure that it's soldered there properly. Then I put the BGA chip on top of it. And again, I, I usually clean the flux. I usually clean the flux. In this case, I actually left that no clean flux on there. So I left all that gooey, bunky flux on there so that I, the, that backlight I see would not move at all. I did not want that backlight I see moving one bit after I pushed it on there. So I pushed it on there as hard as I can. I made sure it was aligned. And then I heated it as I usually would, and I soldered it straight to the board. I also, while I was working, I capped and taped. I used that orange heat-resistant tape over this so that I wouldn't desolder it from those two pads that I soldered it to so that it would have backlight. And now I have a machine that boots in his backlight. Now, unfortunately, I have a very, very high load of machines to do. I love showing you that it works after it's done. I don't have the time nor the inclination to do that with this one because it requires walking over there and walking back over here. And the people who work here already give me funny looks because it's like I'm, I'm doing these videos in the middle of the day instead of fixing shit while they're answering all the phones. And I don't really need an employee revolt on my hands. So I'm going to go back to work now. Uh, hopefully you learned something from this. If you have any questions, post them below. If, uh, and as always, hopefully you learned something. Ah. One piece.